टू ऑल व्यूअर्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पॉलीसेक्राइट्स इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द मोनोसेक्राइट्स एज वेल एज द ओलिगोसेक्राइट्स एंड टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द पॉलीसेक्राइट्स नो पॉली मीन्स मैनी एंड सेक्राइड मीन्स शुगर मीन्स मैनी शुगर कंबाइन टूगेदर टू फॉर्म अ पॉलीसेक्राइट्स ऑल टूगेदर आई कैन से दैट पॉलीसेक्राइट्स आर पॉलीमर ऑफ मोनोसेक्राइड यूनिट्स बट नाउ द क्वेश्चन राइजेस दैट हाउ मच हाउ मेनी मोनोसेक्राइड यूनिट कंबाइन टूगेदर टू फॉर्म अ पॉलीसेक्राइड सो सी इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो यू हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द ओलिगोसेक्राइड एंड द ओलिगोसेक्राइड वॉज अ स्मॉल सेक्राइड ओके विच वॉज मेड अप ऑफ फ्यू शुगर्स मिनिमम टू टू मैक्सिमम नाइन एंड ऑलवेज रिमेंबर a polysaccharide will be always having sugars monosaccharide units more than 9 and sometimes it may go up to thousands okay so thousands of sugars can also combine to form polysaccharide but the minimum number of the sugars will be always more than 9 so i can say that polysaccharides are the polymers of the monosaccharides and the monosaccharides found in the polysaccharides are bound either in linear fashion or they may be found or they may be found in branched chain pattern fine and also remember one thing that in a polysaccharides in a polysaccharide the individual monosaccharides are linked together by glycosidic bond say for i have drawn a figure here which is showing many monosaccharide units so these are monosaccharide units right and these monosaccharide units are held together by glycosidic bond fine so uh, you must know that the bond which is found in between the monosaccharide sugars in the polysaccharide is the glycosidic bond these polysaccharides are also called as glycanes these polysaccharides are also called as the glycanes and the right end of the polysaccharide remember that the right end of the polysaccharide is called as the reducing end and the left end is a non reducing end i am repeating once again the right end of the polysaccharide is the reducing end and the left end is the non reducing end now let's talk about the classification of the polysaccharide this classification of the polysaccharide is actually depending upon the chain composition it depends on the chain composition fine so the polysaccharides are categorized into two number one is homopolysaccharide which are also called as homoglycanes and the second category is the heteropolysaccharides which are also called as the heteroglycanes now we know that homo means same poly means many saccharide means sugar and hetero means different poly means many and saccharide means sugar so these homoglycanes or homopolysaccharides they consist of only one type of monosaccharide units homo means what same means all the monosaccharides which are found here will be of one type only fine so they consist of only one type of monosaccharide units when we will be discussing in detail the various type of the homopolysaccharide you will see that there are only one type of the monosaccharide units there may be many there may be many but there will be only one type of monosaccharide unit now in the case of the heteropolysaccharide they consist of more than one type of monosaccharide unit more than one type of means the monosaccharide units found in this heteropolysaccharide will not be of a single type they may be of more than one type so what is the chief difference between the homopolysaccharide and the heteropolysaccharide that they consist of only one type of monosaccharide units and they consist of more than one type of monosaccharide units now here are some examples some common examples which you see in day to day life that is starch glycogen cellulose and inulin right both all these uh, that is the starch and the glycogen cellulose inulin are very very important homopolysaccharides and the examples of the heteropolysaccharides are that is chondroitin chondroitin sulfate 
you must be knowing about the cartilage chondroitin sulfate is a heteropolysaccharide which is found in the cartilage heparin just now uh, we will be talking about the heparin also hyaluronic acid and peptidoglycan again i am repeating the examples of the heteropolysaccharides are chondroitin sulfate found in cartilage second example is the heparin third example is hyaluronic acid and the fourth example is peptidoglycan and the examples of homopolysaccharides are examples of homopolysaccharides are starch glycogen cellulose and inulin fine now first of all we will be discussing about the starch the most common homopolysaccharide okay now plants store their chemical energy in the form of starch you know very well that plants absorb the radiant energy from the sunlight and they convert this radiant energy into chemical energy and this energy is stored in the form of starch so the stored food material of the plant i in fact i will say the stored food material of the plant is starch and remember that when we do the starch test okay to know the presence of the starch then starch will always give blue color with iodine right if you want to do the starch test then add iodine so the starch will always give blue color with the iodine okay and starch is a food storage polysaccharide starch is a food storage polysaccharide and remember this thing that starch is a mixture of two different polymers starch is a mixture of two different polymers but don't be confused that it is a heteropolysaccharide starch is a homopolysaccharide it is a mixture of two different polymers one is known as these are the forms of the starch don't be confused amylose and amylopectin so i want to say starch is a mixture of two different polymers one is known as the amylose another is known as the amylopectin and this amylose and amylopectin are found in 1 is to 4 ratio they are found in 1 is to 4 ratio and amylose is linear amylose is linear and it consists of 200 to 500 glucose units and amylopectin is branched amylopectin is branched and it is made up of 1000 glucose units so you must remember this thing that starch is a homopolysaccharide why because both the amylose and amylopectin are made up of single monosaccharide units known as the glucose okay so it is a homopolysaccharide so all together i can say starch is a mixture of two different polymers one is amylose another is amylopectin amylose is linear amylopectin is branched it consists of 200 to 500 glucose units it consists of 1000 glucose units okay starch is a polymer of d glucopyrinose units linked by alpha 14 glycosidic linkage once again i am repeating starch is a polymer of starch is a polymer of d glucopyrinose units what is a pyrinose what do you mean by pyrinose a pyrinose uh, consist of five carbon and one oxygen a pyrinose consist of five carbon and one oxygen okay so starch is a polymer of d glucopyrinose units which are linked together by alpha 14 glycosidic linkage and that's why we can say it as that unit of starch unit of starch is glucose unit of starch is glucose and if the starch is hydrolyzed means the question is asked sometime that hydrolysis of starch will yield means breakdown or hydrolysis of starch will yield what to dextrin whenever the starch is broken down or degraded or hydrolyzed what is produced dextrin is produced so the stored food material uh, found in the plant is the starch now taking another example of a homopolysaccharide and that is known as the glycogen likewise you know that the starch is the stored food material of the plants similarly the glycogen is called as the animal starch it is called as the animal starch and like a starch it is also food storage polysaccharide it is also food storage polysaccharide but it is stored in animals it is a animal starch and glycogen is actually found in the liver and the muscles 
or in fact I will say that the glycogen is stored in liver and muscles and always remember that if we want to know the presence of the glycogen then glycogen gives red color with iodine glycogen gives red color with iodine starch gives blue color with iodine glycogen gives red color with iodine okay and it is more branched than amylopectin means the structure of the, the chemical structure of the glycogen is somewhat similar to the starch but here uh, it is more branched than the amylopectin because amylopectin was branched now so it is more branched than the amylopectin and 5000 to 15,000 sometimes more than 15,000 sometimes 20,000 25,000 okay so 5,000 to 15,000 glucose units combine together to form a glycogen so glycogen is also very important homopolysaccharide now the third one is the cellulose as we know very well that it is the structural component of the cell wall of the plants it is the main structural component of the cell wall of the plants and cellulose is also a homopolysaccharide why because it is a linear polymer of glucose units when thousands of glucose units combine together in a linear fashion and they are joined together by beta 1 fold linkage then what is formed cellulose chain is formed so cellulose is a linear polymer of glucose units which are joined together by which are joined together by beta 1 fold linkage okay and remember one thing that human beings cannot digest cellulose we cannot digest cellulose why because we are not having the cellulose digesting enzyme which is named as cellulase in we people cellulose digesting enzyme cellulase is totally absent and that's why we cannot digest the cellulose cellulose digestion can occur in herbivores and one thing in more important information i have written here that maximum cellulose is found in cotton if i talk about all the plants then the maximum cellulose is found in cotton it is approximately 95 percent it is approximately 95 percent okay so we have talked about the starch glycogen and cellulose now coming to the next one inulin inulin right inulin is a polymer of fructose inulin is a polymer of fructose right and it is a storage polysaccharides of roots and tubers of dahlia it is the storage polysaccharide of the roots and the tubers of dahlia okay so it is a polymer of fructose and found basically in the roots and tubers of dahlia next one is chitin uh, it is also a, a abundant polymer it is the second abundant polymer it is the second abundant polymer found and chitin it is a polymer of nitrogen containing it is a polymer of nitrogen containing glucose derivative it is a polymer of nitrogen containing glucose derivative known as N-acetyl glucosamine N-acetyl glucosamine and it is found in the exoskeleton of certain arthropods such as the insects and the crustaceans not only this the chitin is also found in the cell wall of the fungi right so this must be also remembered now coming to the next one that is known as the hyal uh, hyaluronic acid Achha, one thing this chitin is also chitin is also a homopolysaccharide chitin is also a homopolysaccharide now coming to the next one hyaluronic acid this hyaluronic acid is a heteropolysaccharide it is a heteropolymer of d glucorinic acid see that there will be different monosaccharide units here it is up till we have discussed about the same type of the sugars but because hyaluronic acid is a a heteropolysaccharide you see that there will be different type of monosaccharide sugar it is a heteropolymer of d glucorinic acid it is a heteropolymer of d glucorinic acid and n acetyl d glucosamine it is a heteropolymer of d glucorinic acid and n acetyl d glucosamine and hyaluronic acid is found in fluid of joints hyaluronic acid is found in fluid of joints wherever there are joints wherever there are two joints we know very well that certain fluid is present okay say for uh, in the two joints synovial fluid is present so in that fluid hyaluronic acid is present 
and there this fluid which is consisting the hyaluronic acid it acts as a lubricant it acts as a lubricant and it lubricates the joints for the easy movement so it is a heteropolymer now heparin heparin you have heard about that heparin is found in the blood and it is acting as a anticoagulant heparin doesn't allow the blood to clot when it is flowing inside the body so heparin is a anticoagulant and it is a heteropolysaccharide okay so in today's video we have discussed about the polysaccharides so watch my previous videos also for the monosaccharides as well as the oligosaccharides thanks a lot for watching me in the upcoming videos we will be discussing about the rest biomolecules also and if you want to maintain the notes then at the end of the video i have given the slide of this video so you can see that thank you